Okay, carry on with independent events. Question 6, page 134. The probability that Jody stays up late on a night before school is 0 0.15. The probability that she stays up late on, on a night not before school is 0 0.37. I've begun to fill up the table here, and we'll talk about that in a minute. And the punchline is, what is the probability that Jody does not does not stay up late for seven consecutive days during the school term. Well, I've gone from Monday right through to Sunday, consecutive days. Could have started anywhere in the week. We'd get the same answer, I promise you that one. Now, I've got here stays up late, and as opposed to not staying up late, in other words, going to bed at normal time. So, what is the probability? The probability that Jody stays up late on a, on a night before school is 0 0.15. Well, here she is staying up late, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and um, she doesn't need to stay up late on Friday because the day after is a, is a Saturday, so it's 0 0.37 according to that, and um, she stays up late on a Saturday, 0 0.37 because the next day is Sunday, and Sunday follows Monday, we're back to the beginning again, and she has to go to bed and early and therefore not stay up late, therefore the probabilities drop back down to 0 0.15. So these probabilities are now correct, and um, let's see what the question says. What is the probability that Jody does not stay up late for seven consecutive days during the school term? Well, if you stay up late on a Monday of 0, as 0 0.15, then probability of her going to bed is 0.85. Remember, all these probabilities must add up to one because they're independent events. Likewise, Tuesday, 0.85, that's up to one, doesn't it? Uh, 0.85, that adds up to 1, 0.85 again, that's up to 1, 0.63, alright, so probability that um, Jody does not stay up late, but rather goes to bed on a Friday is 0.63, um, Saturday, 0.63 again, that's up to 1, and Sunday, well we've got school the next day, so it's early to bed, so very high chance of her not um, staying up late by going to bed. Is that alright? So, back to the question. This is quite a high level. What is the probability that Jody does not stay up late for seven consecutive days? Well, these are our seven consecutive days, all down here. And these are the ones about, these are the probabilities about her not staying up late and therefore going to bed. We have to multiply them all. So here I go. I've got 0.85. And I've got one, two, three, four, five of these to the power of 5, multiplied by 0 0.63, and I've got two of these, that's the power of 2, I want to write this all out five times, and then this twice, I ain't got a lot of space for that, let's go straight to the answer, and here we go, so 0 0.85 to the power of 5, multiplied by 0 0.63 to the power of 2, and that gives us a probability of 0.176. So 0.176, that's approximately 0 0.18. So the probability that Jody does not stay up late for seven continuous consecutive days, one after the other, during school time is 0 0.18. Hopefully there'll be time to do another one. Yes, I have. This is question seven about flipping coins. And uh, I think I'll change to a nice bright colour here. It says a fair coin is flipped three times. So we've got heads, tails, heads, tails, heads, tails. Draw a, tea, a tree diagram showing the possible outcome. So here we go. I could get a head or I could get a tail. That's the first go. Or I can get a head and a tail. The second go. A head and a tail. The third go. Um, second go, so that's the first throw, that's the second set of throws, and the third throw, I can go head or tail, head or tail, head or tail, head or tail, it's quite complex isn't it? Right, all these are halves, Let's put some halves in there, so what's the probability of getting a head? Well, 1 over 2, chance of getting a, a tail, 1 over 2, and so all these independent events are recycled, re-put out again. They're all halves. Right, put it all in the tree diagram. Quite hard.
to fit in, really, isn't it? But it must make a good effort. Right, that's the tree diagram completed. Completed. I want to show all the outcomes. Well, here I go. I can get um, probability of getting three heads is going to be a half times a half times a half, one eighth probability of getting head head tail. again, half times a half times a half, an eighth, all these are an eighth actually. Next one, HTH, an eighth. Next one, HTT, an eighth. Um, next one, THH, one eighth. Next one, THT, An eighth. Next one, TTH. Uh, an eighth. And finally, all, all tails. TTT. An eighth. And, okay, back to that question with the three heads. Now we're looking at um, a fair coin has been flipped three times. I've done the tree diagram. I'm just going to merge this part of the video onto the other one. So we're going to list them again. We could have. Uh, head, head, head. Again, I'm not paying attention to the tree diagram. The reverse is going to be tail, tail, tail. I could get head, head, tail. The reverse being tail, tail, head. I could get H, T, H. The reverse is being T, H, T. I could go T, H, H. Reverse being H, T, T. So these are the different eight outcomes. Um, the outcomes of flicking three coins one after the other, seeing what you get. And uh, the question says, use your tree diagram. Well, I don't need to do that. I've listed the eight options there. They're all uh, probability of an eighth of getting each one. We've discussed that earlier. I need to get the probability of at least two coins landing on heads, at least two landing on heads. So that's two landing on heads. That's two landing on heads and that's two landing on heads. Now, very carefully, the probability that at least two of the coins land on heads. In other words, at least means at least two, therefore I can have three. Therefore I've got probability of at least two heads. It's going to be four over eight, otherwise known as a half. Next bit, the probability that no more than one tail occurs. Let's have a different color to highlight it. No more than one tail. Well, I'll have that one with one tail. I'll have that one with one tail. I'll have that one with one tail. Are there any more one tailers? Nope. They're all twos. So no more than one tail means those three. That's meant to be a one tail. IT note one tail is three out of eight and that can't be simplified. Okay, so that's the add-on to that and I'm very happy with the way that's turned out.